What's up guys, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new Design Basics video for you today from designcuts.com. Now in this video we're going to be talking all about shapes. So whether you're working with, you know, boxes, ellipses, circles, triangles, whatever it is, I'm going to show you guys how to use it in Adobe Illustrator. So we're going to be talking about the different kinds of shapes that you can work with, whether they're geometric shapes or organic shapes, and what that means. And also we'll be taking a look at the Pathfinder tool, which is a really great and handy tool in Adobe Illustrator so that you guys can start to combine shapes, knock shapes out from one another. And I'll just be showing you some cool tips and tricks today. So let's jump right into it. Now over here in Adobe Illustrator, I've just got a nice clean document. So the first thing I want to show you guys here are some of these tools just on the left hand side. You've got these shape tools where if you click and hold on them, you'll see that you get a few different types of shapes here. So you've got your rectangle, your circle or ellipse, a polygon, star tool, and a line segment tool. So let's just start off with the ellipse tool. And the shortcut for that is just the L key on the keyboard. And if I just change my colors here from a solid black fill color with no stroke, you can see as I begin to uh, just drag my shape here that I'm creating an ellipse. So let's get sort of an egg shape and you can just see that it's sort of elastic and it can just be dragged and resized however you want. But if instead you hold the shift key, it's going to constrain the proportions of that shape so that rather than ending up with an ellipse like this, you now have more of a circle or a perfect circle. Okay, but you can rotate any of these shapes. You can, you know, stretch them once you've created them. So you're not locked in. Okay, but let's go ahead and move over to the rectangle tool where again, if I hold down the shift key, I'm getting a perfect square. If I just click and drag it, I can get either a thin line, you can get a wide rectangle, pretty much any kind of shape you want. And these are all geometric shapes. So geometric shapes are basically just the uh, shapes that are not commonly found in nature. These are sort of the uh, man-made shapes or shapes that we kind of think of as primitives. All right, so let's go back here. And if I have this polygon tool selected, and rather than just clicking and dragging it, what if I double click my mouse? Well, now I have this option here that allows me to choose the number of sides. So let's say instead of a polygon, I wanted uh, you know to do eight sides or something like that. You know, I just type in eight and here's my shape. That's pretty cool. All right, and then also if we come down here to the star tool, it works very much in the same way. So if I just click and drag this out, you get a star that looks like that. But a cool tip and trick here is if you hold down the Alt Option key as you're scaling this, you can see that it kind of straightens out the edges. All right, and much like the Polygon tool, if I just double click here, you can choose rather than the number of sides, how many points you want, in addition to these other settings here like Radius 1 and Radius 2, which I think just kind of control uh, you know, how thick the inner part of the star is, like how far it comes in or how far it moves out. Well, let's try and maybe add a lot more points to this. Instead of five, let's say we want something with 20 points. Well, that doesn't really look anything like a star anymore, but I'm sure it's got about 20 sides. We could sit here and count them all, but we're not going to do that. So let me come back here and grab the rectangle tool and just make a square. If I want this to look a little more interesting, I can rotate it, all right, so that we now have sort of a diamond shape. And if I press Command C and Command F to paste it in front, I can then rotate this copy. Now I can select both of them together, press Command C, Command F, and I can rotate it again. Okay, and you can start to see that you're getting a more interesting looking shape like this. Now, if I click and drag around all of these shapes, you can see that they're all separate. But what I want to show you guys now is how to use the Pathfinder tool so that you can start to combine some of these shapes together. The Pathfinder tool in Adobe Illustrator is awesome. It's one of my favorite tools to use. It really comes in handy, especially as you're creating something like, say, for example, a logo, right? You want to try to keep the logo, especially once you have uh, developed it a little bit, you want to try to keep it as simple as possible. So the best way to do that is to do things like combine these shapes together, maybe knock certain shapes out of other shapes, and that's exactly what the Pathfinder tool is for. So let's take a look. If I come up to the window menu, and then you'll see the drop down appear, and I can just choose Pathfinder. 
Now, inside of this panel here, you've got a couple of really cool options. Now, the first one that I want to show you guys is called Unite. And what that does is unite all of your shapes together. So you see now we have one solid shape. So you can change the color of it. You don't have to change the color of multiple shapes at once. Now, very similar to that, if I just back up for a second here until I have all of my separate squares, is this tool here called the Merge Tool. Now that does a very similar thing, whether you're uniting or merging, it's basically going to combine all of these shapes together. So let's take another shape here. If I grab my ellipse tool, maybe I'll make a circle. All right, and then I'll press M and I can make a rectangle behind it, something like this. And now I'll just click and drag around both of these shapes, but make sure that my circle is on top. So a quick and easy way to do that is to select that circle shape, come up to the object menu and choose arrange, bring to front. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, command, control, shift, and the right bracket. And now once I've done that, I can select both of these shapes. And then let's choose the second shape mode called minus front. What that's going to do is knock that top shape out from the back one so that it basically gives you this uh, different shape here, a totally different result. All right, but instead of that, you know, let's say I wanted to create sort of a, a camera looking shape here. I'm going to make this a little bit more narrow. And then let's just duplicate that circle just by holding Alt, Option, and Shift and dragging it to the side. All right, and now I can sort of place that second circle here. I can select this front circle, make another copy, maybe just fill it with white. Okay, so we now have one, two, three, four different shapes. So the first thing that I want to do here is group these two together. So I'll select them, press Command Control G to group them together, and then select my circle in the back and press Command Control G to group those together. Now for this main camera body shape in the background here, I want to make sure that I have you know, a black fill. You can take off the stroke here. And then we'll probably need to modify some of these shapes. So if I just select this wider circle with my direct selection tool, which is just A on the keyboard, I can add a stroke to it, something like that, just by pressing D on the keyboard and then Shift and X to toggle back and forth between those uh, fill and stroke colors. And for the smaller circle up top, I'll just leave that one white. Okay, so what we have here now are a few different shapes, and I'm just going to ungroup it for a second. I know we just grouped it, but ungroup it so that we can work with these separately. So we now have this stroke in the background, but what happens if I select this shape and I resize it, right? If I just scale it way down like this, it still reads, it still reads pretty good. But if I wanted to retain the thickness of this line, I would have to expand it. Okay, so what that means is I just come up here and I choose object expand it's going to change the fill and the stroke from an outline into a shape. Okay, so now if I select that shape and ungroup it, you'll see that over here in my colors, my, my color palette over here, that it's now showing up as a solid white color instead of a white outline. Okay, so that gives you much more control over that, right? And that way you don't have to worry about, you know, the stroke size changing as you resize your shapes. All right, so let's just go ahead and grab that, and then I'll choose this Merge option here, and that's going to merge all of these shapes together. All right, so very similar to the Unite shape. You've kind of seen how that Knockout shape works. Now let's take a look at some of these other options here. If I just select this white circle in the front, and then hold Shift and select the rectangle in the back, and now I choose Intersect. It's just going to intersect those two shapes, but I basically just am losing the shape in the background. Okay, we can try some of these other ones out here. Maybe we'll try exclude. And that's excluding the shape that's in the back, right? So it's just kind of inverting it almost. And you kind of get a sense of what it does by looking at these smaller icons. Now, if I were to click divide, what that's going to do is basically just give me some lines here. Maybe I can demonstrate this uh, for you guys in a better way. Let me just back up for a second. Step back. Let's say I have a rectangle like this, 
and I fill it with black. And now what I want to do is put a series of lines going through it. So if I press P to get my pen tool, just click to make a line, then press Command, Control, Shift, and A to deselect it. All right, add another line, Command, Control, Shift, A to deselect. And just continue this a few times to add these lines going through the shape. Now I'll click and drag around all of them. And now I will choose the Divide option from the bottom of the Pathfinder. And what that's sort of done is broken up this shape into slices. So I can now kind of move it around. It sort of looks like, you know, fragments, uh, broken shards, and things like that. So the divide tool kind of allows you to, you know, create those slices there any way that you want. All right, now let's take a look at another one. And maybe this time, instead of using these geometric shapes, we'll use more of uh, the organic type of shapes. So a good way to think of this is that the organic shapes are more of the shapes that are typically found in nature. So if you think of, uh, you know, squiggly lines, things that don't really follow any rules, um, even shapes of, of trees, plants, basically if you were to take any object, even something like this coffee mug over here, and break it down into a silhouette so that you can just focus on the basic shape of it, uh, most of the time those would be organic shapes. So if you you know, have an object and you just fill it with a solid color. Um, as long as it's not something like a square, a triangle, a polygon, a trapezoid, all that stuff, um, then it's most likely an organic shape as opposed to the geometric shapes that we've been working with thus far. So let's try out a few kind of random, more organic shapes. So if I just grab my pen tool here, I can just go ahead and start creating a shape and I'm just kind of playing with the handles here to get something a little bit more random. All right, and then I'll close it. All right, this isn't really looking like anything. It's not supposed to. It's just kind of a random shape like that. Um, and then I can add another shape on top, right? Also just filled with solid black. Use something like that, okay? So I now have these two shapes together. And if I hold the Shift key and select both of them, let's see what happens once we choose Crop. Now, we're sort of using this second shape here as a mask for the shape behind it. So it's basically only revealing that shape in the back through the shape in the front. Okay, so it's sort of, in a way, like a mask. That's a good way to th kind of think of it. Now, if I back up and I choose Outline, obviously that's just going to make everything an outline. And lastly here, if I choose Minus Back, that's going to just knock the back shape out of the front shape. Okay, so there's just a couple of different things you can do there uh, using these organic shapes. Now, if I wanted to join these together, all right, again, I could use something like the Unite or the Merge option here. Or if I decide maybe instead I want to uh, knock this shape out of the other shape, all right, I would use the Minus Front option by selecting them and then just choosing that shape mode. And you can see how you can quickly kind of uh, create some random and interesting looking shapes. Now, there are a few other cool things here that you guys can do that you don't have to just draw out manually. So for example, if I just took my uh, rectangle tool here, make it a box, I can modify a few things here. I can modify the corners, and you'll see that these have these four white circles on the inside. If I select any four of those with my selection tool and just drag inwards, it's going to round that until it becomes a circle. So you can round all the edges just like that or make them more geometric and straight. Okay, another thing you can do here is playing around with handles like I've showed you before. You can rotate the shapes, extend them, and you've also got some other cool options up here. So if you go to the Effect menu, you can choose things like Distort and Transform. If you wanted to maybe roughen the shape up, just check off this little preview box here. And you can see that you can get these crazy looking, you know, jagged edges here. You can try to smooth them out a little bit. And you can produce some pretty interesting looking results, which, you know, when you look at it in the end, you might not have thought that you could get that from just working with a rectangle. All right, so let's delete that. Maybe this time I'll try it with a circle, come up to Effect, choose Distort and Transform. And now let's try the Twist or the Zigzag effect here. If I type in an angle, 
say a 45. Well, nothing really happens. You can't really tell because it's just a circle. So let's try it with this instead. Okay, we want to twist it. Now you can start to see the result a little bit better. So you can kind of create, you know, ribbons, flags, banners, and things like that. Um, just by starting with a geometric shape and finding creative ways to manipulate it. Right, so let's look at a few of these other ones up here. You can do zigzag, and just remember to check off the preview box there. You can sort of get some pretty cool looking results here. Right, so something like that. And with a lot of these effects in Illustrator, when you pull out the handles or change the size of these shapes, you'll notice that the effects are also moving with it. So there's a lot of ways not only to create your shapes, but to distort them, warp them. Uh, you can pretty much do anything that you want with them. And what's nice about working in a program like Illustrator for this is that because it's all vector-based, you can scale these objects to any size you want, and you're not going to have to worry about things like uh, loss of quality or seeing any you know, squares or pixelation like you would in Photoshop. So even though Photoshop does have the ability to sort of work with vectors, um, this would be my program of choice. This is my go-to. Anytime I'm working on something uh, like a logo or any kind of branding project or really anything where I know that there's going to be elements that I need to be able to change the size of without worrying about losing any quality. So back over here in Illustrator, let's just take um, another example here. If I come back to my star tool, double click, and now I s let's say I want three points. All right, we can take something like that. Then I'll press M to get my rectangle tool over here. And now what I'm going to do is just click and draw a shape that covers the entire bottom. All right, and it's on top of my star shape. So if I hold shift and select that shape, come up here to the pathfinder and now choose minus front. Well, I've now just turned that shape into a triangle. I can use my direct selection tool, which is A on the keyboard to select only that top point, and then just tap it up while holding the shift key to make that top point even more pronounced. So I'm just gonna make these uh, other shapes here in my artboard smaller for a moment. Okay, take my triangle, make a copy of it. All right. And now with this selected, let's come up to the object menu and choose transform. And there's a few other things here that I can show you guys, such as the ability to just reflect this shape Right? So you can create a mirror image of it if you wanted to flip it horizontally, vertically, or you can type in a random angle of your choice. All right, So that's one way that you can kind of modify a shape. Or you can also come up here and choose Transform Shear, which will kind of you know tilt the shape a little bit. Right, It'll kind of give it a, a nice uh, skew like that. It's basically like using the skew tool in Photoshop with the free transform. All right, and you can go horizontally or vertically like that. All right, so you can create all different kinds of triangles. It doesn't have to be this uh, equilateral type of triangle. It can be more of a, uh, I believe it's called an isosceles there, where two sides are the same and one is uh, different from the other. And in addition to using these types of shapes, you also have a whole library of things in Illustrator that you can use. So let's say, for example, we come to the window menu and we open up the symbols palette here. Okay, and then I click on this little hamburger menu at the top. You can come down here to where it says open symbol library. And let's just say we wanted to uh, pull open one of these categories here. Uh, let's try the retro for a second. All right, well, these are a little bit crazy looking, but you can just see in the small preview here what those kind of look like. Um, let's instead go with something like uh, maybe dot pattern or even flowers. Um, you can choose from so many of these different ones, and you can even load your own if you want. All right, let's just go ahead and choose arrows. That's a little bit more simple. All right, and you can kind of get a few of these different shapes in here. Just click and drag a few to bring them in. Okay, and just like the other geometric shapes and organic shapes that we we're looking at, you can do a lot of things with these. You can repeat them, you can rotate them, or you know alter their appearance. Okay, and then you can also come up to effect and do things like 
pucker and bloat, which creates some sometimes unexpected looking results, but uh, it can be kind of fun too. All right, and you kind of actually get sort of a butterfly type shape there. All right, so sometimes it can just be fun to experiment with these kind of things and see what kind of results you guys can get. All right, so if I rotate them, now it looks a little bit more like a butterfly. And again, you wouldn't necessarily expect these kind of results with just working with basic shapes. So it's really important to kind of experiment with these shapes and figure out different ways that you can use them in your designs. Now again, by working in Illustrator, you're ensuring that everything is going to be vector, completely scalable, and you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, I need to make it bigger. Well, now I just need to recreate the whole thing like I would in Photoshop. So these are just some of the different shapes and the ways that you can use them in Adobe Illustrator. Um, and I've tried to show you guys too the differences between geometric shapes, which is one family, versus the organic shapes, which are the more kind of naturally occurring shapes uh, that you will typically find in nature. Uh, versus the man-made ones, which are more uh, constructed and angular. Um, so I hope that this uh, sheds some light on uh, a general topic of working with shapes for you guys. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up, smash that like button, and go ahead and subscribe to the Design Cuts YouTube channel for more. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Eric Vasquez, and we'll see you next time.